It'll be 20 years to the day soon. The day the sky was ripped apart and countless bolts of light rained down upon us. I think this calls for a little history lesson. In 1994, a group of asteroids was discovered taking a long elliptical orbit around the sun. They were created when an unknown asteroid struck the 1986 VG1 Ulysses, an asteroid in orbit around Jupiter. The orbit of these Ulysses asteroids was on a collision course with Earth with an estimated 10,000 meteors set to strike the surface. Since there was no way to divert the orbit of each asteroid, construction began on a vast anti-air railgun network, a last-ditch effort to intercept and destroy the meteors. They built six facilities. The test unit Type 0 was built in China. Type 1 was built in America. And then four Type 5 units were built in Australia, Turkey, Namibia, and Argentina. In July 1999, the asteroids began to strike. Thanks to the railgun network, damage was kept to a bare minimum. Only about enough to destroy the entire world order. Never in its existence had mankind experienced such a catastrophe. It came to be called the Ulysses disaster. The near total loss of infrastructure led to economic chaos, particularly in the hard-hit Eurasian continent. To avoid total breakdown, the nations of Asia and Southern Europe rearranged themselves into regional federations. Military budgets were slashed, and the Federation poured most of their money into rebuilding. The depletion of energy sources brought on by the loss of territory soon proved to be a major problem, one that quickly led to an escalation in disputes over natural resources. We'll continue this later. All right, time to start the briefing. We've got a new guy here today, but I'll have to cut the introduction short. My name's Goodfellow, and I'm your rep from the Arrows. As you know, Arrows is a mercenary force specializing in aerial warfare. Some people like to call us pirates. I prefer they'd call us privateers, at least. We are being employed by the UN Security Council, after all. Anyway, the UNSC's military staff committee just sent Arrows a request for deployment. It was originally going to be an escort mission for the UNF Pacific Fleet stationed in Tokyo Bay, but that's changed. We now have multiple unknown UAVs flying toward Area J4E, Japan's former capital of Tokyo. In other words, right here. The UAVs are likely armed. We need them down before they reach city limits. This will be the first sortie for the rookie here, tack name Reaper. Here's your emblem. Omega from the Bone Arrow flight will be supporting you on this mission. Follow his instructions. I'll be expecting results, you hear? Dismissed. Classic rookie 
sting. Another enemy flight approaching. Four of them? Be careful. Even the bandits have anti-air ordnance on them. I'm adding a TGT display on your HUD container. Take those down before anything else. Whoa, is that a Quox? These bogeys are a lot more agile than the last guys. General-purpose drone designed by JASTF. Might just be a close resemblance. All UAVs destroyed. Good work. All radar blips? What the hell? Enemy UAVs approaching. Open CIWS fire. Enemy UAVs are attacking urban areas. They're striking the coastline from Shinagawa to Kawasaki. And the same armed version we just ran into. This is believed to be a terrorist attack carried out by armed forces from the Iuli region. They've caused extensive damage to Tokyo. The naval fleet was also attacked, so the UNF generals are all furious right now. The UAVs they used are an upgraded version of the MQ-90 Quox, a Japanese-made UAV that's also been deployed in the Americas. It may be unmanned, but it's still a very powerful bomber. It's equipped with an aggressive aerodynamic design and a new type of semi-automatic control system. The UNSC says it's a Werner Noah product. Apparently the control system's a top secret design that they stole. Werner denies everything, of course. Navigation would normally use a system that relies on improved GPS satellite tech. This craft uses a different relay system for its operations. We also caught an unknown fighter craft flying at high altitude over the area. The UN is going to raid and inspect Werner's facilities in Ayuli and the other special zones shortly. Werner Noah is the biggest company in its field. Normally, the UN doesn't like doing anything to make them angry. Now, though, I guess they don't have much choice. where we left off. Now, where was I? Oh, right. So tensions were escalating worldwide. The wars that resulted led to an increasing number of refugees. To handle these refugees, special semi-autonomous zones were established in the EU, the Asian nations, and part of Russia. Iuli, the zone founded in southern Russia, was the largest of them land-wise, which allowed them to take in vast numbers of migrants. But these refugees were treated like cheap labor. Living conditions grew worse, and the region was soon home to gigantic slum areas. Anti-foreign worker demonstrations were rife across the entire zone, threatening peace and welfare in the surrounding regions. As a result, a certain company stepped in to help support the job market in the refugee zones. That company was Werner Noah Enterprises, the defense contractor giant. Once nations had to slash their military budgets after the Ulysses disaster, the private military service industry with its mercenary forces experienced a major boom. Also, thanks to the advanced automated aviation plan introducing enhanced computer numerical control to aircraft manufacture, it became a simple matter to rebuild previously existing aircraft designs. The resulting glut in available aircraft led to a new issue, a lack of pilots to control them. 
Hence why you now see mercenary groups cobbled together from dropout pilots. <clears throat> but I digress. The nations and federations overseeing the special zones welcomed Werner's support. In turn, Werner received huge parcels of land and a huge workforce to do its bidding. Soon the company expanded from its core military business into energy and space development. Their business had an enormous impact on recovery efforts around the world, and the localized conflicts began to simmer down. Now we come to today, 20 years later. The special zones have shown major economic growth under Werner's wing. But the huge weapon stockpiles stored in these zones have made them a breeding ground for armed extremist groups. These groups have formed a multinational network spread across the special zones. And more and more we're seeing them carry out anti-imperialist attacks in the nations surrounding Iuli. This has led the UN and the world's superpowers to label them terrorists. Which brings us to... Hmm? Are you awake? Sorry, you must be tired. We can pick this up another time. <laughs> Following the Tokyo terror attack, the UN staged emergency inspections on facilities in Ayuli. They didn't obtain any evidence on the new UAVs we saw, but they did discover plans for an orbital weapon. Multiple nations are apparently involved in its development. The UN calls it a violation of space treaties and a new threat to replace nuclear proliferation. They're demanding the project be halted immediately. As a result, the chief military official at Werner has been forced out of the company. But this thing isn't over yet. In fact, it's just beginning. We've spotted a large squadron of unidentified transport aircraft heading for Area B-9K, an aerospace center in the West Indies accompanied by escort craft. The center was involved with the development of the space weapon I discussed. The nature of the cargo is unknown, but once we identify the craft as hostile, you have permission to shoot them down. Normally, this would be a UNF or USAF job, but given how tense things have been with Latin America, the US doesn't want to pour any more oil on the fire. All in all, they preferred if the media kept their focus on the Tokyo attacks instead of this. That's why they enlisted us privateers for their dirty work. It ought to be a pretty good payday for us. We'll be having our best pilot on this op. In Arrows, if you're a top earner, you get first priority over everyone else. You want money? You want fame? Then you're gonna have to outdo our ace here. Fire. 
done. The Aerospace Center emerged unscathed. We're investigating the transported cargo right now. For now, this will remain a covert op. Now, I know you guys just went halfway around the world, but I've got more work for you. A group of nine high-powered executives known as the Gray Men have been kidnapped in Russia. We're talking elite members of the most exclusive circles of world economics and government. Meanwhile, terrorist forces have occupied a Werna military facility in Iuli, in southwest Russia. We've got armed insurrections around other Werna facilities too, and we think they're connected. So, we'll be heading for Russia. Next! Bone Arrows, we are now commencing the hostage rescue operation. Move! 
One of the UN elites. Incoming blast! show you some fun.